되게 됩니다. draw this line, will we draw a dashed line or a solid line? What do we have to look at for that? Okay. So it's a less than, can it equal? Is there an equal to? No. So since it has to be less than, it's going to be dashed. So the dashed line is equivalent to the open circle that you've done before. So you're going to have dashed lines if y is less than mx plus b or y is greater than mx plus b that's going to be dash lines going to be a solid line if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So if it can equal the number, if y can equal what other, the other side is, you use a solid line. If it can't equal, then you just look what you have. You're going to shade up if y is greater than or y is greater than or equal to mx plus b. Or you, can just kind of, you know what we mean there? You just put y is greater than or y is greater than or equal to. You're going to shade up. We'll look at what that means to be shading up. You shade down if y is less than or y is less than or equal. Why is there always shading with inequalities? When you just did plain old single numbers and you used the number line, you had to shade to the right or shade to the left. Think about that. Okay. Still have some graph paper left over for you got an answer? Yeah. Um, Michael, you have to shade going to do this first one right here, our example. Uh, let me try something here. So, when you get it, First thing you're checking is, is this slope intercept form? So what I'm asking when I say that is, is the y by itself and everything else on the other side? Okay, so this is slope intercept form because we have the y by itself here. What kind of line will we have to use, solid or dashed? Dashed. And when we're done, are we going to shade on top or below? Shade or shade down? Down. If y is less than, less than goes down. Okay. So between the 5 and the 1, where do I start? Where does the graph start? Not 0, 0 this time. Okay. Remember the plus 1 outside the function? It shifts the function 1 unit up. So that's my y-intercept. 0, 1. Okay, so y-intercept is 0, 1. 
This graph has a vertical stretch of 5. So instead of going up 1 over 5, you're going up 5 over, sorry, up, five, up 1 over 1. You're going up 5 over 1. So your slope is 5. Um, these are just the dots as part of the graph. So when I go and draw my line, now I'm going to make a dash line. Okay. So the question was, these shouldn't be closed circles, and that's true if we're making circles, but remember we're making a boundary line. Okay, make the boundary line. So the line itself is going to be dashed. You can use dots to make help make that line up. Is that getting better drawing at least these lines? Yes, no, maybe? A little bit. Y intercept and slope. Y intercept and slope. Now, if we shade down, this line is fairly straight up and down. It's not perfectly straight up and down. Which one would be down? My the left side or the right side? Okay. What you want to look at, remember it's y is less than. Y is less than. Y is going down. So here is where we cross the y intercept. So wh on which side of the line is y going down? Okay. You see how it's over here? So this is the side you want to shade. So what you're asking yourself is on which side of the line is y going down? Which side of the line is y going down? Or decreasing, that'd be probably the more mathematically correct word to say, decreasing. So, how can we test to see if we did it shaded on the correct side? So, tell me a point that we shaded. Any point. Five, five. five, five. Okay. So we're checking that point right there where the X is. X marks the spot. That is on the side that we shaped. So you notice you could have chosen any point over here. So if I plug it in, Y is 5. Is 5 less than 5 times 5 plus 1? You chose a lot of 5s there. Is 5 less than 5 times 5 plus 1? Yeah, 5 is less than 26. So you shade it on the correct side. When you're ch picking points like that, the easiest one to pick up is 0, 0. Just plug in zeros. Or any number that has a 0, so like 2, 0, or 3, 0, or 0, negative 8. Any of those will work. more of these. Let's go 2x plus 4y is greater than or equal to negative 16. So is this one slope intercept form? No. So we have to solve for y. You don't want to use those shortcuts. If you remember the shortcuts for slope and y-intercept, you don't want to use them with inequalities because sometimes this inequality will change direction. So it won't on this one, but sometimes it does. Okay. So what moves over first, the 2x or the 4? 2x. So 
So we're going to minus 2x. Can I subtract 2x from negative 16 and simplify it? Sure. The inequality sign stays the same direction. I'm going to write negative 2x minus 16. And now what do we do with the 4? So 4 times y. Divide. So we divide. Do I have to do everything or just the 16? Everything. Everything. Oops, not a negative 4. No discrimination here. Okay. Everyone gets a fair treatment. So that's going to cancel. You're going to get y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half x minus 4. So the slope, you want to try to keep that as a fraction in lowest terms. Keep the slope of the fraction in lowest terms, and now you're ready to graph it. Okay. Go. Go quickly and get that. Where are you going to start? The y intercepts negative 4. Slope is negative 1 half. You're going positive. So Should be going that direction. Solid or dashed? Solid, I think, Sandra, you did a slope of two, not one half. Rise, overrun. Now, the flatter the line, the easier it is to tell what's up and what's down. Oops. <laughs> And this one, zero, zero, is clearly in that interval. If I check zero, zero, I'm going to go back up to my original, because I may have made a mistake in my work here. So I'm going to go back up to my original. Two times zero plus four times zero, is that greater than or equal to negative 16? Well, that all cancels off. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 16? Yeah. So it checks. It is the correct side. All right. There's going to be a situation. If I have 3x minus y is less than 8. I'm not sure make it. Is that okay on the second one? Are we done? I got that okay. Yeah. 